Hello everyone. Today we are going to continue with limits and their properties and we'll be focusing on section 1.4 that is continuity and one-sided limits. In previous lectures we learned about informal and formal definition of limits we also learn how to solve these limits using numerical, graphical, and analytical approaches. In this lecture, we're going to look at one-sided limits and continuity. So in this video session, I'll be focusing on one-sided limits. So let's talk about what is a one-sided limit. Now let's look at this little graph here. So notice we are trying to see that this function, what is the limit value at x equals c. Notice this function fx is not defined at c because you can see this little hole over here. But if you want to study what's happening near c, that's where the limits come into play. We try to see what is happening to the values which are coming from the right hand side. These are some x values over here and some x values are also taken from the left hand side. So when we take the values which are closer coming from the left hand side, we see that the limit is approaching L. That is a function value is approaching L. Similarly, when we're looking at values which are greater than C, and as we take values which are closer and closer to C from the right hand side, the function fx is approaching again L. So in both instances, the function is coming very close to a single number L as x comes from the right hand side or comes from the left hand side. So in this scenario, we say that the limit exists. In the notation form, it is the limit of fx as x approaches c equals L. Now notice over here I've written it down that when we're looking at the values of x coming from the left hand side we rep represent that as c minus okay and we it's not raised to power please keep that in mind it is the way we uh, say it, it is x approaching c minus the moment you see a c minus it means that the values of x are coming from the left hand side or approaching uh, to c from the left hand side. Similarly, if the values of x are coming to c towards the, from the right hand side, we represent that notation as x is coming approaching c plus positive. So this is basically a right hand limit and x coming from c from the left is x approaches c minus. Now in the next slide, I have written it down very clear cut. What is a left hand limit and a right hand limit in the notation form? So once again, if f is a function in C and L are some real numbers, then we say that the limit of the function fx as x approaches C is L if and only if. The limit of the function fx as x approaches C minus, that means values are coming from the left hand side. Let me just quickly draw the graph here. So this is a C and suppose this is my graph. So when I say x coming from the left hand side, so I'm looking at the values which are coming from here. That means x approaches c minus. So the function is going to L. Similarly, when we are looking at values which are coming from the right hand side, so this is which I'm talking about. So x is coming from the right hand side or approaching c from the right hand side, the function here also is going towards L. And the limit will exist. Remember the limit exists means what? Limit of the function fx as x approaches c is L. That means the right hand limit should equal the left hand limit. So this basically means that the left hand limit equals the right hand limit which equals L. So this part of the equal sign, uh, left hand on the left part of the equal hand uh, sign is basically talking about these two. Okay, so we have talked about the definition, very simple. Let's look at some examples.
Now the first example is an example given by a function gx which is x squared minus x over x. Now when we draw this function it is a straight line with a open circle over here when x is 0. Clearly when x is 0 we know that the function is undefined. Remember here that g of 0 is undefined. But let's look at whether the function has a limit at that point. So in other words, we like to know what is the value of the limit of the function as x approaches 0, even though this function g is undefined, of this gx. Okay, so that's what we need to find. So let's look at the left-hand side. So if I'm coming towards 0 from the left-hand side, that means the limit of g of x as x approaches 0 minus. That means I'm looking at the left-hand limit. What is this equal to, guys? It is coming, the value is coming towards minus 1. Okay, so that's minus 1. Now let's look at what is the limit when you're coming from the right-hand side. Notice I'm using some colored uh, markers over here so that you know uh, left-hand limit is in the black. The question is in the red uh, marker and I'm going to use a blue marker to say right hand limit. Now over here if I take the limit as x approaches 0 positive that means I'm coming from the right hand side of the function gx. Once again as I'm, the values of x are approaching towards 0 the function is going towards minus 1. So clearly the left-hand limit is the same as the right-hand limit, so that means the limit exists. And this answer is minus 1. Okay, so that was just from a graphical description. Now let's look at the second function. Now the second function, notice that this function is not defined at minus 2. Oh, sorry, now, it is defined at minus 2, but we can easily see from the graphical description that the limit does not exist at minus, oh, so it's, it's actually minus 3, guys. Minus 1, minus 2, this is minus 3, sorry. Okay, yeah, so let me re repeat this. This function is defined at minus 3, but the limit does not exist. We already know that from our previous uh, lectures in chapter 1. At the same time when I'm looking at the value x equal to 2, the function is defined and at the same time the limit is existing. Okay, so let's look at this one. So let this function be say y equals f of x. So clearly we see that f of minus 3 is actually your value 2. The black dot is the value which is given here. But when I look at the left-hand limit, so remember the left-hand limit. What is the left-hand limit? That is, I'm coming from the left-hand side towards minus 3. So the left-hand limit at x equal to minus 3. x approaches 3 minus of this function fx. What is it? This is 0. Okay? It's coming. Remember, the limit exists. Please keep that in mind. But... The open circle means that the function is not equal to, the value of the function x equal to minus 3 is not 0. Okay, the open circle means that is not included. But the limit is equal to 0 as the, because the values of x is coming closer and closer to minus 3, the function is going closer and closer to 0. Okay, let's look at the right hand limit here. So the right hand limit is the limit as x approaches 3 positive, minus 3 positive, sorry guys, it has to be minus 3, then let me just write it nicer, more clearer. So x approaches minus 3 positive of f of x. Where is the value going? As I'm coming towards minus 3 from the right hand side, notice this red one, the function is going towards 2. That's where the function values are going. Clearly, the left hand limit is not equal to the right hand limit. And what we have learned? 
If the right-hand limit is not the same as the left-hand limit, that means the limit does not exist. And also we know from the graphical um, approach to a limit, there is no limit value at minus 3. The limit does not exist. On the other hand, let's look at this part too. What's the limit as x approaches to minus? That means if I'm coming from the right left-hand side. That is the left-hand limit. That value is 2, which is L, the left-hand limit. Now let's look at from the right-hand side. The limit as x approaches to positive, that means you're coming from the right-hand side, fx, again the value is 2, which is the right-hand limit. Clearly, the left-hand limit is the same as the right-hand limit. So we see that the left-hand limit is the same as the right-hand limit. So that means the limit exists. That is, the limit of this function fx as x approaches 2 is 2. Okay, it's a little mess here, guys, but this is for problem number. Oh, we need all this, so I need the diagram to talk about it. Okay, let me just clean this up a little bit because we need this graph very clearly. Okay, this is equal to the right-hand limit, and we say limit exist that is this okay now let's talk about this graph the third graph okay I'm going to redraw it over here guys because we really need to talk about this now this is a graph which is a semicircle okay this one's much more better so just take my little drawing guys here 4 minus x squared notice that the domain of this function is minus 2 to 2. It's a very important concept, guys. The domain of the function is minus 2 to 2 because we cannot take any values which are less than minus 2 because the function won't be defined and greater than 2 also as the function won't be defined. So in this scenario, notice what's happening to the limit because there's no values here. We can't think about that. But here, when you're approaching this function from the right hand side minus 2. You're coming from the right hand side, the limit will exist. So, so here if I say what is the limit of this function fx as x approaches minus 2 positive, that means I'm looking at the right hand limit. Then automatically we know the answer is 0 because the function values, notice, are going towards 0. Okay, let me. Okay, so that's where I'm saying. So as x is approaching the function is here and x is coming from here. On the other hand, when we look at x approaches 2, now it's only having the left-hand limit exist here. So here the limit of this function fx, which is the square root of 4 minus x squared, x approaches 2 minus. That means we are only looking at the left-hand limit. Keep in mind, guys, this is square root of 4 minus x squared. Once again, the answer is 0. Okay, so this is a special case where on one side, a left-hand limit will exist, and on the minus 2, only the right-hand limit will exist. And we can't even talk about limits on the left-hand side of minus 2 because the function is not defined over there. So you have to be very careful of how the domain of the functions are. This is a very important concept, guys. Okay. Let's look at another example. 
it's a mega example, I would say, because I have a lot of these questions in one question. So, okay, I will start the problem, but I will give you that as a practice for you. I'll start the problem, as I said, and then I will let you finish it. So it's a practice question because we have practiced one-sided limits. So let's look at this one. Is f of minus 4? Now, f of minus 4 clearly is defined, right? Okay. So what is f of minus 4? It is 0. Let's look at f of 0. f of 0, guys, is also defined. What's the value for f of 0? It's 5. These ones I want you to do. These are, this means it is a right hand limit when you see a positive, okay? Now let's look at zero minus. So the limit of this function of fx as x is coming towards zero from the left hand side. So I'm looking at this scenario. Where is the function going? The function is going towards zero, okay? Let's look at values which are coming from the right hand side. So when x is coming towards 0 from the right hand side, that's 0 positive here, where is the function going? Function is going towards 5. Remember, this is the right hand limit and this is the left hand limit. Notice the left hand limit is not the same as the right hand limit, so which basically says that the limit does not exist at of this function fx as x approaches 0 because the left hand limit is not the same as the right hand limit. So let me write down what I just said. Say that the limit of this function fx as x approaches 0 does not exist. The reason? The left hand limit is not equal to the right hand limit. The rest of the questions guys, practice. Okay. So, in the next video, I'm going to start with continuity at a point. Thank you.